that's a better one. That's quarter to 11. <coughs> There's about 50,000 uh, boats here, all over my line. It is getting a bit precarious now with the um, with my line. I'm going to have to dip the rod under the water. So. Hey guys, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel. This morning is Monday the 26th of August. It's coming up to about 7 o'clock. I just got down to Ludham, or at Ludham Bridge, just to the right. And today I'm just going to be uh, feeder fishing and whip fishing. I've got a 6 metre whip set up. Let's just let these cars pass. It's a busy little spot. I've got a six metre whip to hand and I've got a seven metre whip. I haven't set the seven metre whip up yet. I've got the pole ready here. And I've got two feeder rods. I like uh, feeder. I've got my Zebco Trophy. This is three metres 30. Nice light feeder rod. Small feeder. It's not flowing at the minute, but when it does flow here, it flows hard. I've just got that. 0.75 of, uh, of an ounce, three quarters of an ounce feeder on. I've got a really light hook length, got 2.3 pound sill style hook length, and a size 18 cameras and B520 on that. And I'm just going to be feeding today. I'm going to build a peg up. I'm just going to put some bait through every cast. I'm not going to ball it in or anything. And the other feeder rod is my usual diver Tornado Z Porky Pig. Medium heavy feeder rod. I haven't put a feeder on here, but it's all set up with the Shakespeare Mac 2 XT 4000 reel, 10 pound line, uh, 10 pound shock, shock, 10 pound shock link, down to 8 pound main line, and that's again just running on a straight through on a little swivel. The feeder be below. There's one stopper feeder bead above and two below, so I can adjust the length of the hook length. This one's a little bit heavier. It's a 3.2 pound Maxima and a size 14 cameras and B520 on there. If the bream arrive, if there's a uh, start getting some plenty decent skimmers and bream and that. And then on the six meter whip, well, I'm fishing at five meters to hand at the minute, but I've got a six meter if I need to. I've got this set pop perfect just for swinging. I've got a one ounce, nice bulbous sort of river stick float there. And that's with a three quarters of an ounce or 0.8 of a gram Olivet. Number 10, number 10, number 10, number 10, number 10. There's a one, two, six number 10 stops there. And I've just got that in a almost shirt button style underneath it. So the lead's going to get it down to two thirds of the depth. And then I want a nice slow natural fall for the roach. This is a Gamma Katsu G line, which is 0 0.10, which is 2.8 pound. And there's a size 20 B911 on there. But there's always plenty of fish here, so we'll start with the feeder, but quickly show the bait. I've got some ground bait mixed here. That's 50-50 green and brown crumb. I put a lot more fish meal in it today. It's really quite a fish meal, but three good handfuls of fish, uh, fish meal. <coughs> pure fish meal ground bait for it. There's some desiccated coconut and crushed coriander in there and other bits and pieces and some hemp oil. Uh, it's crushed hemp which has got a little bit of aniseed oil in it. Got a pint of mixed maggots, reds, fluoros, whites. A couple of pints of hemp, which I've done yesterday. A pint of casters. A tin of sweet corn. 
softened two mils, load of worms. Out of a wormery yesterday, all coming good. I've got a pint of uh, squats and then about half a pint of dead red maggots. That's a selection of uh, feeders and bits and pieces. Yeah, but I'm going to start on the feeder. I'll still be a loose feed in the whip line just for uh, later on because I suspect give it an hour or so and then the boats will start coming through and might make the uh, feeder line go a bit funny. So I'm just going to start with two reds and a white. Dead, dead maggots. So I'm going to keep that feed going in on the whip line. I've got the ground bait very down, uh, very, very uh, quite dry today, and I'm just pressing it in because I want it. It's not overly de deep here. And I'm just literally putting a few casters, three or four bits of corn, a pinch of dead, uh, pinch of squats, literally couple of dozen just a tiny pinch and again same with the uh, dead maggots just put a few in and I'm just going to build the peg and it's going to feed per cast I don't want to put too much bait in because at, at the start there's a uh, loads of little fish in there and they can get a bit wild and raggy raggy bites I can see the, the uh, flow starting to pick up and I'll quickly show you where I'm fishing. I don't know if you can see the line now where the river's starting to flow and there's a crease on the river. And just, it's a very gentle overhead. I'm just swinging it out, pulling the rod back, hitting the clip. I've clipped up, hit the clip. tip under the water and sink the line. I've only got like a two thirds of an ounce tip in here, glass tip, glass, fibre glass tip, really nice and soft. Still going to keep that bait going in. Just a little at a time. Some hemp and casters on the six metre line. Just, oh, there's a bite. Just tightening up a bit. Very jaggy little roach bites. But... Oh, I missed that one. Okay, let's just try normal live maggots. I'm going to go with two reds, see if we get more positive bites. We've noticed on the dead maggots, it's just getting tiny little plucks and knocks. And it's going to do the same again. Tiny pinch of each bait going in. I'm putting the corn two mils and squats through because hopefully we'll get a few uh, bream arrive later on. And if we do, then I'll have to obviously step up the feed a bit.
I'm just aiming for the corner of the bottom of the roof of the house opposite. Just sink in that line. That was a lot better bite on the live maggot. A lot better bite. A lot more confident. I think we were still missing. Yeah. Taking the maggots completely, look. That was a lot better bite. Maggot's gone, I don't know how we missed that one. I might step up the hook. This time I'm just going to put a ground bait and no feed in. I think there's plenty of fish there. I don't want to get them too wild. Another nice roach. I made the decision straight away to uh, swap rods. I've put a lighter feeder on. I know it's on a heavier rod and heavier setup, but it's bigger hook. I was just missing too many bites before. Slightly bigger feeder, but it's lighter. It's only half a gram, but it's holding. I had a couple of casts without any bait in it just to uh, get the right line. I've clipped up. I'm only half filling this because it's a bigger feeder. I don't want to put too much bait in, but it's got that bigger Cameras and B520 size 14 on there. And I've just made the decision to put on worm. And it's made a difference straight away. So I'm only half feeding that, or half filling it, should I say. And just very lightly uh, and hooking myself at the same time. Let's put you on the same line. Oh, that's not good. Let's just re-dip this uh, feeder because otherwise I'm going to lose all of the stuff like that. And this is a softer tip as well. This is only a half an ounce tip in this one. I can really see, it. and that last one, hit the clip. Dip the rod. And I was literally holding it in my hand, just holding the rod. I can see the bites, I can feel the bites. And there's a bite straight away. Straight away. I'm just gonna hold the rod actually. Not even putting the rod on the rest, just holding it in my hand. And another nice fish. All right, better feed this uh, whip line. I've not fed it for a couple of minutes. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to have a play around. I'm going to take this feeder off, put a smaller feeder on, but the same weight, just so it holds uh, a lot less bait. I've got loads more ground bait. I want to see how 
light I can get away with. I'm just going to start with one of these, which I've, I make all these up myself. Make my own cage feeders up. I've got smaller ones, bigger ones, heavy ones, lighter ones. I've got even smaller and bigger than that. Some really big ones, what I use as a tape up. You just need some rodent wire. You can get a couple of meters of it off the bay. Some lead clips and strips of lead. A pair of digital scales and you're away. Cost you. Well, that, I think that cost me about. Well, once I bought the lead, the roll of stuff was about a fiver. And I just used some 50 pound braid and then put a swivel and clip on it. I'm going to go for a nice big bit of worm to see if there's anything decent around. Great big bit of worm, tip for a single maggot. I'm taking that one off. Yeah, I'll just get some 50 pound braid. Put it under the uh, lead and I bend it. And a small swivel on the end, so. I haven't even used a quarter of it. Must have got about 50 feeders out of it so far. And you don't mind if you lose a few, it costs you nothing. Rather than spending two quid for one in the shop, by all means go ahead if you want to. We hit the clip, get that rod tip right down, watch those two V's come together. I'm going to put the rod on the rest, I'm going to grab myself a coffee. I've not had a coffee all morning. It's a really light tip in this, half an ounce glass fibre tip. I'm just putting them here is bending it. I mean, even that half an ounce is just nicely holding, nicely holding. I'm just going to keep that bait going in. Just bit tighten up a little bit. We we'll see that flow's picking up all the time. Uh, we're holding at the minute quite nicely, but if we need to change feeders, I've got plenty with me. I'm still feeding the six meter line. Now that's, uh, I mean, I was getting a bite every cast within seconds, and, but that's just settled down now, actually, now. So hopefully, Maybe the bigger fish is starting to move in. I can see with that tip. Oh, you're in the right position. The flow is just starting to pick up on it.
I'm not sure if that will trip out in a minute, but that's just picking up nicely. I'll get rid of these catapults because I don't need them. Because <clears throat> so I'll just chuck into hand. It's going to lift this a lot. Touch. There we go. Perfect. Let's loosen this off a bit. There you go. When I, when I do the feed, I just I just want the slightest bend in it. Just the slightest bend. But if we don't get bite within a minute or two, we'll bring it in, put more feed in, and we'll recast it out. That's gone strangely quiet. I'll we'll just give it a couple of minutes, and then we'll bring it in. Oh. Well, that was a good bite. I bloody missed it. That was a good bite. That was a bream bite. So maybe it's the case of sitting and waiting that was a bream bite <clears throat> and that did not want to lose that not ideal not ideal all right still got a decent bit of worm on there so let's just get that back out i'm going to tip it with a red maggot tail end so i've got plenty of hook Show him. Pressing that in quite nicely. I'm aiming for the bottom of the roof, the corner apex bit. Well, hopefully the bigger fish are starting to move in and if they do I can't miss too many bites like that. It will spook the shoal, spook the fish. See that's a lot more jaggedy, that, that other one was just nice gentle straight pull round. That's just me tightening up. <laughs> Keep feeding your other lines. I mean, initially... <clears throat> I went to Womack this morning, but it was absolutely ram-packed. There's no space whatsoever, not one, not one gap to get in. So I came down here, made the decision to come down here.
Okay, it's a Tommy Ruff. Oh, I haven't seen a Tommy Ruff for years. The old Tommy. What well, for Tommy Ruff? Purple eyes. Oh, purple eyes. Not a good sign though. Same like gudgeon and scavengers, normally the last in the peg. So they might need to put some more bait in and get some fish back in the area. It is a tummy. Not a zander. <laughs> As well, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get a few worms and put a few chopped worm through. Let's find a better bit of sweet corn. Let's go for a single bit of corn. I'm going to start putting more sweet corn, two mils and uh, squats through and just see and a few a little bit of chopped worm just going to get a few worms I'll just do a few at a time because I don't want to put it all the way through my mix because if they don't respond to worm and they back off with it if you put too much in there, you, you knackered your swim. It'll, it'll kill the swim dead. So I just want to see the response first, more than anything. It either works, and it really works, or it'll kill the swim. I'm just going to put this stopper bead a bit further up, I think. You don't want to cast too hard and it hit the cliff and bounced a bit. But I'm going to get rid of this bottom rest because what I'm going to do is get rid of that. I don't need that. I just rest that on. That's it. My feeder arm on my pole roof. Fish straight away, look. <laughs> Fish straight away. Let's get the disc order on that. Nice little roach. I'll right, get that in. I'll show you where I'm feeding or where I'm fishing. Just starting with a single red maggot. And again, I'm just feeding every cast. Predominantly uh, casters and just casters and uh, hemp on this line. I'm just swinging that out. There's a little crease there. A few casters.
Oh, I missed that one. That was a good bite. That was a good fish. I just want to get over a little on the edge of the ledge, bottom of the ledge. There's a bite straight away. I'm just swinging it out, holding the float, letting that settle up against the bottom of the ledge and just running it down. I'll probably need to put another a number eight stop on there just to dot it right down. It's literally a fisher bung here. But I'm going to keep this line. One second, I'll just get unhook this fish. A little skimmer. Oh, wee hee hee. A little jumpy skimmer. Or pommy by the looks of it. A little pommy. Right. I want to keep that line for when all the boats start. And I can't use the feeder. That's a nice roach. Stepped up a bigger bit of corn there. And now I'm pretty much putting in corn, two mils casters. What I've noticed is that was just the slightest tiny pluck on there, but I'm just wondering whether this feeder is too light. It's, been, it's holding, but the bites are harder to register on the tip for whatever reason. Don't put my hook bait in. More corn. Pinchy casters. A good pinch of two mils. A little pinch of squats. And a couple of dead reds. I'm going to give that a good squeeze because the ground bait's quite dry. A lot more fish mealy. Really sweet fish mealy mix today. Hitting the clip, putting that tip right under, sinking the line. So I'm finding it hard to put a bend in the tip. So I think it might be a little bit too light. It's not bouncing down the peg, but it must be just dragging it. It's about as much as I can get on the tip. There's a little bite there. <laughs> Might keep this feeder, but <clears throat> just add a bit of lead to it. Or is carry in a box here? Or in where, where, my, where my feeders are, I've got a little box 
with strips of lead. You just add it to the feeder, step up the weight a little bit. I can find where they are. got some lead strips, we've got a few dead cows. Got some more bigger dead cows in here. Oh, there's a bite. There's loads of bits of lead here. This dead. I've got, I'll put this strip on. Oh, and that's a bream. Typical, isn't it? <laughs> that was a good bite. Nice, slow, big pull round. Oh, it is, yeah. Skimmer. Let's turn it. Best fish of the day so far. Oh, right in the corner of its mouth. I think putting that more sweet corn and uh, two mils through has helped. Oh, and off you go. I wonder how many boats are going to clatter the bridge today. It's a really, really small, narrow sh little bridge, low, and you can't pass it at high tide if you've got a big boat and a screen. And you get people queuing up two and three and four with the engines in reverse against the flow and you can get a bit calamitous. <laughs> Don't hook the net. Come on, off we come. That's the good thing about our little back stopper rest. I've got a good couple of foot of play there. I can lock this down a bit actually. It just acts as a self-hooking thing. If the fish run off of it, it hits the top knot and then obviously that knock like a bolt effect. It's quite dry this uh, mix actually. I might put a little bit of water through it. But some... In fact, what well, I was going to put some lead on, one on. Okay, I'll have to empty that feeder. I'm just going to put a little bit of strip of lead on. I'm really going to press this quite hard because it's very dry this mix. Hit the clip, put the rod under the water. Oh, 
Right, let's have another one. Don't forget to keep feeding the other line. And it's just keep case of monitoring things now. I mean, if the, I get a few more of them, I have to put a bigger feeder back on and put more bait through. And just because you're fishing the feeder doesn't necessarily mean you need to treat it any different to if you're just fishing the waggle or the float or the pole. You can respond to the fish, how they're feeding, how confident they're taking, step up the feed down the feed you know, could even put a bomb on if you think it's you're starting to feed too much and the bites are getting really fast and sharp and jaggy I can't remember who said it Ivan Marks or something think float fish feeder so do exactly what you would do on the float line on the feeder line you don't have to put the same amount of feed through all the time. Keep the same feeder on all the time if that flow's picking up or slackening off. You can even have a couple of chucks with no bait in it sometimes if just to settle it down. Nice roach. Nice confident bite again. Nut cast. I put nothing but sweet corn fruit. <clears throat> I probably just put sweet corn somewhere and two mils through this one. I'm just gonna try and get them homed in on the sweet corn if I can. That's the plan. Just hooking the sweet corn, turning it. Just get the hook point coming through. But I think I might need to move the feeder position. I think I might need to go to the right a little bit. Because even though the flow on this inside is going right to left, I think it's now out there. It's turned itself around. So I put a load of corn through it. A couple of two mils. And I still keep them squats, a little tiny pinch of squats going through because they settle on the bottom and it just keeps them grubbing around nicely. I'm just going to hold this in my hand because I need to know where the flow is going. I'm going to try it to this side. Yeah, I can get better angle on the tip that side. Yes, a lot better. A lot better. We need to sink that line then. It's coming back, it's coming back. That's a lot better. Oh, that line's kinked over. Should be able to read the bites a lot better now. Apart from that sun. And what I'm going to do is in a minute, once this cast is over, I'm going to let that settle for five. pick up the whip and see if we can get a few on the whip and then we'll come back to the feeder again and just alternate between the two Ooh, there's a good bite I can see the bite so much better so much better just by sw swapping it around and putting that more corn through just seems to have sparked them into life a bit 
big noddy head of a broom. Well, decent skimmer, one or two, yeah. Okay then. So I think it's out in the net because it's not going to come out otherwise. <laughs> no. That'd be a scissor job. Ever so slightly hooked. Straighten. Let's just straighten his neck right up. Right, let's try that again. Nice big bit of corn down the centre. As far as the right to the bend, turn it. Get that point out. I'm going to press this in hard because it's really quite loose, this ground bait. Quite active, fish mealy. Again, loads of corn. Pinch of two mils. And a good pinch of squats. I'm going to press that in hard. Right, I did say I was going to go on the whip, didn't I? <laughs> Not after that decent fish. perch it's gone back to worm I'm just now just switching between worm and sweet corn and seeing which one more works best I'm gonna go for a nice big bit of sweet corn Straight in the centre, come out the side. I'm going to tip it with a dead maggot. Stepped up the feed a bit in the feeder. Good at 10 so bits and put them casters back through. Seems to have uh, brought a few bites. Cutting out the dead reds in the feed. Squats, casters, two mils and corn. I 
I've moved the feeder back. It's just when it was striking, it just seemed the, the, the way the line was coming out of the water was like against the flow of it, if that makes sense. We don't get a decent fish this time. I'll come off this line and let us settle for 20 minutes, half an hour. We'll go on the board. I'll switch back to corn. It's typical, isn't it? As soon as I turn the camera off. Tip fly around. One piece is caught with a dead red maggot on it. Snotty skimmer. Just make sure you get all that. Just bring it all up to the top of the leader. And just ping it off. I keep saying it'll come off, but every time I say I'm going to come off, I get a decent skimmer. Right, we'll do that again then. Nice big piece of corn down the middle. Twist it round. Bring it out the side of the hook. It's strange just putting those casters back through, it's just brought, brought them fish back again. Might be worth trying caster next time on the hook. Double caster. Squeeze it as hard as I can. And what I'm going to do as well, I'm just going to pull these two bottom buffer beads up just to lengthen the hook length a little bit. A couple of inches. Move that top knot of one. A bit longer drop now. Always have 
as you can when the flow's like this, nice and gentle. Keep the tip as low to the water as you can. Just helps sink the line, bury it, especially with boats and pieces. There's a bite straight away, look. That's a lovely roach. Look at that. Look at that roach. Stunning, eh? Right, let's get this on hooked and straight back. Well, oh, beautiful fish. I can't, can't do both. Let's disgorge you. What a lovely fish. Single bit of corn, single bit of castor. Oh, look, he's come out in the net, look. <clears throat> Another decent skimmer. About a pound and a half. Again, a single bit of corn and a single caster. Taking it really confidently.
So I'm starting to bake mainly now. The feed is mainly two mils, sweet corn and casters. Pinch of squats. But it seems to have tuned into the caster today. It's finding a nice big caster. Nice golden, dark golden one. So hooking all the way through like that. Again, a good, <coughs> sorry, a good pinch of casters. Still a few two mils, a pinch of squats. I'm not putting any maggots through it in the minutes. Seem to get little of fish and uh, perch and stuff. Oh, have I lost the caster? I've lost the caster on that one. Yeah. So you guys, I made a decision and just uh, having a bit of a play around. I'm getting loads of bites and they're good bites, but I'm just missing them at the minute. So I've shortened the hook link right down to about just over a foot. I say I've got the two sliding uh, feeder stops if I need to lengthen it off again. And I've just shortened the, the gap between the top one so there's a little bit more bolt effect rig. And what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to have this cast. If I don't connect, I'm going to take the hook link off. Take the feeder off. I'm going to put one bait up feeder in, just one. Predominantly ground bait with loads of corn and a few two mil squats and casters. One of them in, I'm going to let it settle for 20 minutes. Go on the whip. It's about quarter to nine. Still plenty of bites and plenty of fish, but just struggling. I've had three or four sort of bites now, just missed. I'm stuck in, sticking with the uh, sweet corn and caster. Wait a little bit longer for a bite, but they're good bites. It's getting out warm now, so I'm going to have to take my top off in a minute and find somewhere to clip the microphone. Yeah, there's a good bite there. Over that, I think the flow might, might be picking up. See, I missed that one again. All right, last chance. Last chance. I think it might just be a case of letting it settle. It's gone a little bit finicky at the minute.
Go on, off me line. There's bloody ducks swimming in my lawn. Right. I'm going to put this down. I'm going to put a bait, one bait, foot, bait up feeder in. Take the bait off, yep. Yeah. I'm going to let that settle. The bites are just getting a bit strange, a bit hard to hit at the minute. Let's put one of these on. 40 gram Preston bait up feeder. I'm going to put a lot more grazing food in it. Two mils, squats, some dead maggots. It's going to be a good handful of corn. I'm going to get that in. Pack that in tight. Check the time. And then we'll get on the whip. Ooh. Heavy. Always give that a really good sweep. Make sure you empty it straight away. Not a dragon bait everywhere. That's why I've got a ten pound shock leader on. And what else what I'm gonna do as well? I'm going to put some more lead on. Another strip of lead. Right, let's pick up the whip. Right, this line should have had plenty of time to settle. Plenty of time. It's going to start with a single maggot. One thing that's noticed is it's a very gentle flow today, very gentle flow. Can absolutely gush through here, especially that bridge. I mean, that's hardly moving. Oh, bloody hell, would you know it? Nice quality roach. Well, hang on a minute guys. I know it's the wrong way. Okay, I've been on the whip for 20 minutes. The flow's really picked up now. Um, I'm not getting much of a run through. 
on the whip. So it's been about 20, 25 minutes, like I said. So I've just literally gone straight back on the feeder, put a bit of lead on it, I put the rest to my right because it's flowing hard now, right to left. It's been in less than a minute. And the best fish of the day. Just rebaiting that and uh, letting it settle. It's made this certainly made the difference for the second minute anyway. So. Out. I've just re-lengthened the hook length as well. I thought with this flow, I've just put another sort of like six inches on. Again, that's one single bit of corn, and then one single bit of caster. But because I put the bait up feeder in, I just put ground bait in on that one. I will introduce a little bit of bait this time. Still sticking with sweet corn. Sweet corn and casters and a few squats and a few two mils. Well, I did want to go to Womack this morning, but maybe it's a good thing that we didn't uh, find a spot. So we're having a good day at the minute. There's a bite. We'll just wait for that tip to go right round. Come on. Oh, still there, still knocking at it. All of a sudden it'll take it, and I think it's gonna be now. Oh, there we go. And we're in, and that's another decent fish. If this boat don't cut me off. You know what, putting that bait up feed in, feeder in and leaving it has made a world of difference. Another crack and bream. So 
Sometimes I'm quite good. Yeah, everything's coming together at the minute and as I say, I'm just reading the peg, reading the bites and another nice decent bream. They seem to be getting bigger. That's literally top lip look, right in this top lip. So I think we'll do that again. I mean, we'll keep things fishing as we are. And if it goes a bit iffy again, I'll get another bait up feeder in there, leave it 20 minutes, let it settle again, and then I'll go back over the top again. And, and I'll pick up with a whip line when things go a bit iffy, let it settle. But you just need to uh, read what's going on. You know, if you're getting bites and you're, you're hooking every fish that you get and then all of a sudden it, it goes weird and you're struggling to connect, you know, there's, there's reasons why. Um, are they getting finicky? They're wising up, they're just nibbling the bait. Or do you need to lengthen your hook link? Or There's things you can do and... Are you putting too much bait in? You're not putting enough bait in. You just need to keep experimenting, changing one thing at a time. Don't change, try and change everything. Just change one thing at a time. Because if you change everything all at once, that you don't know what works and what hasn't worked. And if you just change one thing at a time and then assess it, did it make a difference? And then you can sort of uh, start building up a picture. I mean, today they want the casters definitely and they want the sweet corn. I've not put any maggots in for about an hour or so now. Um, the maggots are bringing the roach and the perch and other bits and pieces in. So literally all I've been feeding is predominantly sweet corn and casters with a pinch of two mils and a pinch of squats each time on the feeder line. I'm still feeding the whip line but I'm chucking it way upstream so it's flowing quite hard as I say right to left. I might have to catapult it in a minute if it's a... Oh, we're back in. Let's hope we can get another fish. And I've got the, on this uh, pole arm here, I've got a watch, which I've, it's always been on there now, we've been on there for years. I can look at the time, look when I cast in, time of casts, there's a bite. And again, we're just gonna wait until we get a nice, slow, steady pull round Ignore the knocks. We'll have to move that glass tip in a minute. Or well, the top eye is not quite lined up. So it's 5.46, well 5.47, so I'm cast in at 5.45. I'll give it to about 5.50. And it's I'll bring it in, whether we get a bite or not. Put more bait in, recast it out. Because it's flowing hard at the minute. You know, every five minutes we need some bait going through because it's going to get washed away. There's a little knock on the tip there. There we go, that's more like it. 
it's there and all of a sudden it will go like that and that's a really good fish a really good fish it feels like it anyway you just got to sit and wait for that tip to slam round oh, is it They don't go well in the flow though. That main channel out there. We're bagging. We're bagging the breams. Maybe not quite as big as the other one, but definitely chunkier. It's a little fat git. <laughs> Another nice bream. Right in the bottom of the lip. And they don't seem to mind. I'm right in the middle of the boat channel there, and they don't seem to mind at all. All right, let's get this in and let's get cracking. Let's have, let's have a bream bagging sesh. Okay guys, that's been in about 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Another bream. Seems to be getting slightly bigger. Again, look, perfectly hooked. Right on the, just literally lip hooked. Right on the, you get it, you get one or two, like that, you get one or two. The third one is a little bit more than normally the fourth time it just go. And you just sit on your hands and wait for that tip to go round and hold round. You know, I am absolutely slimed up. It's like something out of Ghostbusters. <laughs> There's slime everywhere. But I don't mind. If we're bagging bream. And as I say, we're right in the middle of that boat channel, right in the middle of the flow. But they don't mind, not today. Okay, I'll do that again. really gonna pack all the bait in because we're at two or three now they you know they uh, go through they're like big shoals of bream like herds of cows just shove the bait down and if you don't keep it going in they'll soon drift off again it won't take long for them to mop it all up when they get confident so that's why squats and the two mils are great to hold them in your peg a little bit longer to keep them grazing through and what I'm going to do in a minute, I've got a little bit of ground bait down there. Because I am putting two mils and squats through every cast, as I say, it goes on the bottom and keeps grazing. I'll put all that in the, well, not all of it, but a couple of handfuls through all the ground bait because it's, so it's there every cast. And then I can just put the casters and sweet corn in the feeder each time I need it. But you must clip up, you must clip up. You must be hitting that line every time. You don't want to slam, you know, you, you just want to gently hit the... Oh, there's a bite straight away, I hasn't even settled. Straight away. But, um, you don't want to hit the clip too hard because it'll bounce back. You just want to nicely hit the clip. Have it up in the air. Hit the clip, put the rod down, get it under the water, sink the line as quick as you can so the two V's come together. Down on the on the uh, rest and just put a slight bend in it. And then it's just a case of sitting and waiting. I have to take this jumper off in a minute because I'm sweating, but 
It's got my microphone on it, so I'll have to somehow clip it to my T-shirt. And like I said, I mean, things go a bit strange again and start going slow. You could do one or two things. You can, oh, oh, there's a bite. You, um, I'm not going to change how I feed because I think that's spot on at the minute. But I can get a bigger feeder. So I'll put more ground bait and more particles through. Or I can bait up again, sit and leave it 20, 20 25 minutes, then go back on again, which is probably what I'm going to do today. Again, we're getting those twitches, twitches, and I'm just going to wait for the tip to fly around again. I'm going to have to take this jumper off because I'm absolutely boiling. I know it's going to go. As soon as I get my jumper over my head, it's going to go. <laughs> That's hot. <clears throat> Just as well I cut my hair yesterday. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to have to put the mic down for a second. <clears throat> you dare. <laughs> oh, that's better. Okay, just one over those bites where the tip flew off the re uh, rest <clears throat> and the hook limit was completely gone cut. So I think it was a bit of a pike in the swim. So I thought it was a good opportunity to do what I was thinking anyway is I put a lot thinner hook length on, which I put on a same breaking strain, but 3.2 pound by a pearl on line. It's only 0.10, it's really thin. And I thought it was a good opportunity to step up the hook size to a size 12 cameras and B520. Because I'm putting a big bit of corn on and caster, it's going to just give me help, or hopefully help me sort of like get a hook purchase a lot better. But the, the line's a lot thinner. The bites have gone a little bit iffy again, so I'll probably assess it this cast. And if we miss a bite or you get a small roach or something like that, then I'll do exactly the same as before and put a bait up feeder in and go on the whip. But it's absolutely baking. It goes from one extreme to the other the last two or three days. It's cold, windy, rainy. Wasn't too bad yesterday. But it's now about 20 past 10. So I would expect things to go a little bit quiet on the tip. <clears throat> Especially now there's a lot of boats coming by and there's arguments at the bridge. Trouble up bridge, as they say. You can only get one boat through at a time. Yeah, we've just done what I said I was going to do. I had another good bite, but completely missed it. Well, I had two, missed them. So I put another bait up feeder in, loads and loads of corn, loads of casters, two mills and squats. I'm going to give that 20, 25 minutes. I'm going to go on the whip again. Before I go on the wall, before I cast out, put any bait on, I'm going to re-plumb, because I think I probably need to put some depth on. In fact, no, it's dropped. So I'll take well, a good foot over depth now. So let's take some.
We're way over depth. I just hit a fish. <laughs> Still over depth. Must have hit a fish on the head. Well, that's perfect now. Just the bristle and about a centimetre of the body showing. Let's just recheck that again. I need to come up just a little bit more, I think. Just plopping that plummet on my line. Yeah, still way over depth. Strange. Strange. I haven't thought, thought it would drop that much, but yeah, looking at the water this morning, I could breach that no problem, but that's way down now. <clears throat> So there's no point going on it and fishing if you're two foot over depth. There we go, that float's disappeared, so. That's bang on, bang on. It's just the tip showing now. It's just the tip showing, which is nice. Single red maggot. We're keeping an eye on the time. Okay, so give it 20 minutes. It's had five. All right, let's swing you around. Not come too close now. That flows these up a lot. I might just move that Olivet down, I think. Looking a little bit high. You see the boats have to uh, pause and go in reverse. Some are coming through the bridge. Straight in. So like the M1 sometimes in this down here. I've not heard, heard anyone clatter the bridge yet. I'm surprised it's still standing. There's no point staying on that feeder line <clears throat> when things go iffy. 
you'll only upset the fish that are there if you keep striking and missing and upsetting the shoal and it'll spook and drift off and you might as well refeed it come off it let the fish get the confidence back and then go back on it and catch a few fish on the whip or whatever in the meantime Certainly confident now. And we've been feeding it and already fished it for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So we've had about four hours <clears throat> of free food going in. Best fish of the day. Well, I've been on the uh, whip for 25 minutes. It's gone a bit quiet. I've just uh, <clears throat> gone straight back in. That was the first bite. And probably the best fish of the day. They're still there. They're still feeding, but they say it's just literally lip hooked again. But I've had to switch the uh, feeder arm round. Nice bream. The tactics are working well today. Right, if I can get this in the net. When things get whiffy, just putting that one uh, bait up feeder in, leaving it 25 minutes and going back on it. And it, it's doing the business. I mean, there's so many boats going backwards and forwards right on top of my line, but they're not bothered about it. They ain't bothered about it at all. We've got a traffic jam, guys. Oh, four boats queuing up. And we've got quite a big boat. I don't think he's going to... She's... Well, that one there is not going to go under. I think that other boat's even bigger. <laughs> That'll not get under. That will not get under, that's for sure. Not for stating the tide down rising. As well, what I've done is I've dampened the ground bait up a lot more, so, so it's a lot wetter. So, um, what's going on here? Must be Jack. Something's not right. So, it's a lot wetter. I put more hemp water through it. No. We're jammed, we're stuck somewhere. I think we must be jammed on this hip. No, that's right. It's right there. There we go. You would have to lasso yourself. Oh, yeah. You sod. Okay, guys, it's quarter to 11. <clears throat> I just got so lucky with this fish. The boats are everywhere. I've kept the tip right down under the water. I just saw the tip go around. I struck, felt a head bang. Then the rod just went on that boat over there. I thought, ah, so I see it. it's on the hole. It's, it's going to go in the uh, propellers. 
I put the rod downstream, the clutch was screaming, I put the rod as far down as I can, it's come loose. I've kept the rod under the water all the way because there's so many boats here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <coughs> I've just had the best bream of the day. <laughs> I couldn't get luckier than that, I tell you, I couldn't have got luckier than that. That's a better one. It's quarter to 11. <coughs> There's about 50,000 uh, boats here. All over my line. It is getting a bit precarious now with the... Um, with my line, I'm going to have to dip the rod under the water, so... No, I just... You all right? Yeah, right. You sure? Right, just wondering what to do now because there's so many boats and I can't see <coughs> what's coming out of the bridge with this boat in the way, um, if they're going to literally skirt this boat. I can't get my rod out and line out of the water, uh, it's, it's just a matter of time till I, I will get to, I can see by the line up there, it's all, it's all kinked, uh, it's, it's rubbed on the bottom of a hole of something. So, or that big boat that went past. But you definitely like that sweet corn. Okay, with that many uh, boats <coughs> going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, it's gone a bit quiet, so I quickly uh, had a break in the boat, so picked the catapult up. It's, it flows quite slack at the minute, so I put three pouch falls I've got a nice strong black elastic it's the black hydro I'll put it in myself oh there's a bite and uh, a catapult with three bits of corn in and two pouch falls of caster I was gonna say if it's gone a bit quiet I was gonna put another bait up feeder in but I've got a bite but you know Quarter past eleven. It's near, you know, nearly the middle of the afternoon. You thought that the bream and the big bites would have stopped, but they're still here. On a bright sunny day, boiling hot, bank holiday Monday. You, you, but it's one of them days they just want to feed all day. They still occasionally feed in the whip line just in case, but. I know there's plenty of roach and stuff down there on the whip line. I'll probably give it another half an hour and then start packing up and we'll see what we got, shall we? Come on, we've got a couple of nice plucks on the tip. I'm just waiting for it to go around. What I've done is I've moved the feeder here because of the flow's changed. Or the rest of the arm, sorry. Um, literally, if, if a boat's coming quite close in, I'm getting off my box, dipping my rod down and putting the tip on the riverbed. Okay, the boats are quieting down now. It's half eleven. I've just put another bait up feeder in while it's quiet. I've just gone straight back out. Another nice skimmer. Right in the corner of its mouth. And it's one of them days today where it doesn't seem to matter, or not, they don't mind. It's bright, hot sunshine, middle of the day, shed loads of boats, and they're feeding. But I think it's a, it's a good bed of bait down there now. They're confident. They're there all day. I'm going to, I've got the last sort of, 
bit of ground bait, I'm going to fish that out, use it all up. I just dump the last of the two mils in there. And just carry on the same bit of sweet corn and a single caster. It's just as well I put shed loads of bait with me today. Because it's one of them red letter days where you don't really want to... F What's happened here? Oh, sweet corn's come off. You don't really want to stop fishing when it's... Uh, <clears throat> they're just feeding all day long. It's not, it's not often that happens. Not if them out of boats in the bright blue sky in 26 to 27 degrees. But for whatever reason, they don't mind. Well, I'll probably give it half an hour. I pack up. And then we'll have a look what we got. And we're in straight away. Wow. They are really got the, really got their heads down now. Ah, I think it's come off. You all right? Come off. I had to bully that one because that boat was right in my path. Literally, as soon as I hear the, hit the deck then, it's in seconds. There must be a big head of fish down there. It's typical that boat was right in the way. have another one. Okay guys, I'm all done. I'm not going to lift them out of the kick net because there's too many fish here. There's, uh, one, there's about two dozen skimmers, nice bream.
don't want an awesome day's fishing. About 35 pound I reckon there, mainly skimmer bream, up to about three pound the biggest one. Anyway, all between a pound and a half, three pound. Plenty of roach on the whip, a few perch, a little Tommy Ruff. Hope you enjoyed the video. It's been one of them days, one of them red letter days. I don't really want to stop, but enough's enough. There's only really so many bream you can catch in a day. The bites have gone really finicky again, but yeah, it's quarter twelve. Middle of the day now, and that's enough for me. I need to go uh, going back, get the change, have a nice cold beer. I think. Tight lines, guys, all the best, and I'll see you in another video.